Thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at assignment 9.3 concepts. These slides will help you understand indoor air pollution and in its many forms. So first of all, indoor versus outdoor air pollution. Uh, we can see that indoor is a pretty serious problem in a lot of countries like India. It's a bigger problem, almost twice as big as outdoor. China is about equal. Sub-Sahara Africa, much bigger difference. And we can see in industrialized countries, it is primarily outdoor air pollution that is the problem. We'll take a look at indoor air pollution and what causes it. Pretty much in developing nations, indoor cooking fires are very common and a major health risk because it produces both carbon monoxide and particulates smoke. And that's pretty much why we saw in all those other countries greater problems due to indoor air pollution. And um, US citizens, we do spend 90% of our time indoors. And so generally speaking, indoor air spaces have more pollution than outdoor spaces. And countless consumer products and synthetic chemicals kept indoors are used in our daily lives. And we're gonna take a look at some of those in this slideshow. The UN estimate for the world is that 2.2 million deaths per year are from indoor air pollution and 0.5 million deaths per year are from outdoor air pollution. That's four times less. In developed nations, the two biggest threats seem to be cigarette smoke, which can cause lung cancer for smokers and those inhaling secondhand smoke, and radon, which is a naturally occurring odorless, colorless gas that is radioactive. It seeps up from the ground and enters homes through the cement foundation where it can cause lung cancer. So I want to point out that both of these cause lung cancer. Radon is a radioactive gas that might come from which of the following? Choose all that apply. Multiple mark. Okay, welcome back. So if you said bedrock, soil, and water wells, that is correct. Let's take a look at, um, look at that. Let's just elaborate for a moment. Bedrock is the rock that the house is sitting on. Soil is the dirt that the house might also be sitting on. And water wells, the, um, the radon can seep from the rock into the water sitting in a well and then it gets pumped up and you might end up drinking. Well actually the problem with that water now going into your house is that radon gas can then enter your home that way. We can see which part of the countries have a bigger problem with radon. We are kind of moderate right here in Santa Barbara, for sure. Um, and down in LA, they have less of a risk. And it um, doesn't really show exactly where is the worst place, but you can see um, in the northern part of the country, not so good. It's best to have your home tested for radon, and I plan to be awarding some radon tests to some of you students. You might get lucky. Which of the following are common pollutants emitted by consumer electronics? Multiple mark. Okay, so if you said A and D, that's correct. VOCs, you can smell these just by smelling consumer products. And sometimes they have a kind of new car smell or sometimes they just have this other kind of funky, not natural smell. Electromagnetic frequencies, we haven't talked a lot about those, but those are considered pollution. In Europe, they're much, much more aware of the amount of wireless signals that they're being exposed to. Um, ozone, this is a possible. If you're talking about a high voltage electronic device, like a copier machine or a laser printer, or a motor that has some sparks happening inside, then those are definitely producing ozone. Here's a summary showing all these different pollutants in, pollutants in the home. And maybe I'll just point out some big ones here. Pets have dander, which can cause allergies. And um, you have um, pipe insulation, which oftentimes contains asbestos, which is a glass fiber that can get inside your lungs and stay there your whole life and help contribute to lung cancer. When you have fireplaces and wood stoves, you get particulate matter. Paint can have lead in it. And um, yeah, um, even showers are saying some of the chlorine gas coming off. Um, furniture can emit formaldehyde, especially 
furniture made with particle board. Carpets have foam and carpets and foam insulation. They all outcast. You know that new carpet smell. Uh, heating and cooling ducts. That's big. It can harbor moisture, which can harbor mold and bacteria. And in the gas in the garage, you have um, pollutants like gasoline and oil and all that, which are considered VOCs. Tobacco smoke, of course. Um, and then here we have our rocks and soil, which can bring in the radon. Okay, well we went through a lot of those. Some, and so I'm just gonna kind of put these up here, maybe not read it entirely. But little living organisms like dust mites or animal dander, fungi and mold, that can all contribute to allergies and asthma. Sick building syndrome is something that we call it where it seems to be building related, like people only feel sick when they're in a certain building. And it can be made worse by tightly sealed buildings that don't bring in much fresh air. We're trying to do such a good job nowadays of making our houses airtight so that they're easier to heat and, and keep cool. But obviously the air gets kind of stale. How can we reduce indoor air pollution? Number one, buy and use low toxicity products. Things like low VOC paint. Provide good ventilation. Limit exposure to plastics, treated wood, pesticides, and cleansing fluids. Keep them in the garage, not inside your home. Test your home for radon. And they recommend that if you test it, you should test it again a few months later because the radon levels can vary weekly or monthly. And test your drinking water for lead from pipes. You'll probably know, I mean, if your house is old, <clears throat> then it might have lead solder. If your house is newer than like 1980, it's fine. Uh, in the developing world, provide ventilation and install clean burning stoves or shift to burning gas rather